Hi everybody, Jack here. I just wanted to quickly check in to correct a few mistakes I made in the previous video and add one thing that I forgot to explain. Register F. So the first mistake is that 16 bits can contain a number between 0 and 2 to the power of 16 minus 1, and not just to the power of 16 like I said in the video. I used the correct numerical value afterwards, but I forgot to add the minus 1 at the very end. Same thing for 8 bits. If it's an excuse, this kind of error happens a lot in programming, and it's often the source of the most silly bugs. The second mistake is that in assembly, the part that lies after the label is not called an operator, it's called an operand. An operator is instead a sign that denotes an operation, like plus, minus, equals, etc. The third mistake is that I got the term weak typing confused. The feature I'm referring to is actually called dynamic typing. Weak typing means that the language does not give any kind of error if you try to perform operations between objects of different type, the opposite of what we saw Python do. For example, in JavaScript, a weakly typed language, if you tried to sum hello world and 2, you would not get an error, but would instead obtain hello world 2. A weakly typed language tries to make a meaningful result of the operation you request. A strongly typed one prefers not to take a guess. Conversely, a dynamically typed language like Python does not need to know what kind of data variable will contain, whereas a statically typed language like C wants to be told in advance. The last mistake is that I accidentally listed c -sharp as a compiled language, when it actually runs in an interpreter, like Python and Perl. Now, regarding register f, I just wanted to briefly explain what it is and why it's useful. Register f doesn't behave like the other registers. In fact, you can't even load a value in it, apart from some very specific exceptions. However, whenever you perform a math operation of any kind, register f gets updated with a bunch of useful information about the result. Specifically, the first four bits will be flipped if some things happen during the operation. Bit number 7 is set to 1 if the result of the operation was 0. This is called the zero flag. Bit number 6 is set to 1 if the last operation was a subtraction. This is called the subtract flag. Bit number 5 is set if there was a carry from the lower four bits to the higher four bits in the last operation. This is the half carry flag. And bit number 4 is set if there was a carry from the higher 4 bits in the last operation, or if the A register contained the smaller value when performing a subtraction. This is the carry flag. Now, some operations change some of these values for other reasons, but this is the general behavior of the flag register. And this actually directly influences the jump instruction, as the four conditions available for a jump are NZ to jump if the Z flag is 0, Z to jump if the Z flag is 1, and C to jump if the C flag is 0, and C to jump if the C flag is 1. This explains why I used the jump C instruction in the example for the previous video. Subtracting 100 from a score lower than 100 would have set the C flag to 1, because A would have contained the smaller value. This actually shows that I made one last mistake, as I originally intended for the life counter to be increased once the score went beyond 100, but by subtracting 100 instead of 101, the increment is done when the score reaches exactly 100. So there you have it, just a minor addendum to the first video. I hope to see you all for the next main episode. Until then, thanks for watching.